We are in Lincolnshire. I'm not going to name the lake. I've named it myself. And I named it by and an affectionate way of calling it Ibiza Beach. This lake is around about maybe eight or nine acres. It's quite a deep lake, average depth 14, 15 foot. It's got about 17 carp if you're lucky in it. And I've had three of them. I spread the rods out over in front of Ibiza Beach and it was all like, as it dropped off and that area to the left, but it was all dirty and silkweedy. So it was just chodding. And around about half past 11, I just opened my eyes and the rod melted and I caught this 29 scaly, one of the old, old originals. So that's as near as I would get to that big scaly one. I had a little stroll around, not too far away off my rods, just keeping an eye till say like 10 o'clock till I had to go to sleep. And if you remember, I was up, I was up early, but if you remember in the morning, I turned around and I said, I, I had a feeling and I always said this, go with your gut feeling. For some reason, it's like an inner sixth sense. And it got worse and worse. Nothing was seen apart from tench. Tench always show early. Um, and if you're not watching, you could think it was a carp sometimes because they do half lunk out. Anyway, I'm in the middle of like prime bite time and I just crank the rods in and go for a look. And, you know, a few of the syndicate members who know what's happened said, Jim, I thought you said on typography that, you know, you won't go on Lake 5, 6 and you're red carded. Well, I walked around and around and around and eventually I made my way around there. I just thought I'd have a look, you know, see from the flooding damage what it was all about and, you know, the state of affairs and all the rest of it. I'm not joking, as soon as I looked out, one showed. <laughs> Look, this is February, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to sit there and like turn a blind eye and walk away from it or do I fish? Well, like all of you, um, there's still five in there I haven't caught. I had, to, I had to have a go, so you can imagine. Um, I left something in the swim, I watched for an hour. I saw, I think it was, I can't remember if it was six or seven. Yeah, it was it was six. One might have been a tench, but they were really discreet rolling apart from one. You'd have to be watching, but when a tench rolls, it blows out the oxygen within maximum of like five to seven seconds. And then you were watching, and then you get a big plume of long bubbles 15 to 30, 25 seconds later. And it was definitely carp. So look. Sorry, um, there's no one else on the whole complex. There's no one there. So what do you think i done? I packed up and went because I found carp showing. And to be fair, you're lucky if even if a moid comes out of there in March. And an original, I've only ever caught one, a 40 pound common. And that's my, this is February, so no chance. Didn't think I was going to catch, to be fair. I, I honestly thought that they were just stockies out of Lake Four that had come in on the floods. Um, because I did see a couple and they did look small. So you imagine I've got it marked. I'm not going to say where um, and all the rest of it, because you never know, I might walk past there again <laughs> in the next week or, or tomorrow and I'll get a show, but I can't. I'm going on Lake Eight anyway. I got round there, I didn't change the rigs, I just checked the hooks, just chucked the rigs out. One went down really shallow, which was really bizarre, really. And I thought, yeah, there is a bar, maybe it must be a high bit on it. Seemed about seven, eight foot, maybe nine in, say, 14, 15 foot of water. And the other two I put to the left. Anyway, nothing happened. I set my house up and I was sitting well back watching the water and then one mid-afternoon just rolled like right over the middle rod. And I thought, right, sweet. So you can imagine, I, going into darkness, I was like 
mega full of confidence of a bite. I was texting all the, I don't know, my mates there, giving them loads of grief. You ain't here, I'm gonna catch this one, I'm gonna catch that one, I'm having Rosie again, um, blah, 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 winding them all up. You know, it's just fun and games because honestly, I didn't think I was gonna get a bite. Anyway, I was up, say, half five in the morning and that's something COVID has had a part of playing. For some reason, I seem to sleep for about five or six hours and then I can't sleep anymore. Um, and normally I like seven to eight hours. So that was a bit bizarre, really. Um, so I was sitting there after a couple of supercharged coffees thinking I'm going to see a carp. And ju just behind me, I could, I could see the sunlight coming through the trees behind and then the rod's gone. Anyway, I played that one in. I got a shot with the rod bent on my high, on my thing. I knew it was a small one, and uh, it was obviously uh, one out of the stock pond. So that means we've got there's a load of fish got in there that have all got to be moved back. Um, and it was a common. I didn't weigh it, 13, 14 pounds. I took a picture on the uh, mat just to give to the new owners. And then I thought, right, I've done something a little bit different to what I would normally do. Even though I've had a bite, I decided to reel all the other rods in and redo the rods. Like new hook baits, check the hooks. Anyway, deployed it all out. And I was, say, an hour and a half later, preaching on the phone to my mate, um, Tony Preston. And I had an absolute one nota. And... Um, I sort of, heart, you know, you half throw the phone, but it's gone somewhere, I don't know. And it's just screaming. So I run down, looked at the rod, it's bent over, and you can see the braid cutting left. I picked it up, played it, and it's just charging and charging and charging. And I thought, I've got to put the rod down. It's gone so far left and probably done me about 70 yards. So I've got the chesties on, and you can imagine as I've got the rod up against the, the alarms, all the other two alarms are just bleeping and that rod's bent right round. So I've got my chesties on. Um, I grabbed hold of the net, got the rod and just let the fish, as I walked all the way along the reeds, about 30 odd, 40 yards, just keep a tight line through them and then played it from the next swim. And it'd gone down maybe another, I reckon all told it had done me 120 odd yards and it wouldn't stop and I was worried about it on the kite angle, going so far left and coming in, bringing it up round a point of reeds. So I decided to follow it. Anyway, I was playing it down there and my Nash Pursuit had a certain bend. And what you've got to remember by then, this fish had slowed down from the madness um, and it was just like that slow plodding but the rod was bent to a certain bit to the, the butt. And I just know it was a big one. So I had to go out into the lake. It was, even though it was sun, I had a t-shirt on. It was lovely. It was, was it 14, 15 degrees? It was the day before the 17 degrees. And um, I thought, I put my hand in the water and it was like flipping freezing because I've like gone out into the lake. Um, you know, I'm playing this fish and it's obviously hit the reeds and then gone out and kited. And then the rod is just like doing that as you've got a big end, just kiting. It's just weight kiting on the on a tight line. So I, anyway, I'm just praying, don't be rosy, don't be the pit for fully. Uh, that would really seal my doom. Um, anyway, I see a mirror. And I thought, well, there's no loads of, uh, there wasn't a load of flash of scales there. So it's not one of the three fullies in there. So I'm safe. Anyway, I see two, um, I see, yeah, two big apple slices on its shoulder. And I go, no, nah, it's, it's got four. And anyway, right, I obviously missed the other two. And maybe after about three to four minutes of it just plodding under the rod tip, I've got the sun beating on me. Um, it was, it was so mild, but the, the water was so cold and I'm playing a woolly chunk out of late five, six in February. Um, anyway, I slipped, I slipped the net under it, popped the hook out, 
and I tipped it on its side and then I see the big four scales and on the other side as well and I just thought oh Christ that's um, Brian and yeah it's a recapture but I called it its last capture was 18 months ago at 38 pound and yes I was the last one to catch it and it's now 40 pound two ounces so I'll forget about it at 38 and I'll take the 40 pound two ounce on that one anyway um done the pictures um what was it sam one of the new owners come over and see it ollie was there and um aaron done the photos for me right we're at the wall pack uh it's february and this carp's called ryan it hasn't been out for 18 months and uh i've done my normal Find them, cast them, bait them, catch them. And uh, I've had a 13 common. Just had this one at 40 pound two ounce. Mistral baits, in stiff rig. Oh mate, what a chunk cake. Eh? That's what it's all about. I love it over the wall pack. Mega place, my second home.